Now, it's no secret that the Resident Evil series has always had a special place in my heart. Even at its most goofy and ridiculous, there's a kind of nostalgic charm to its earnest depictions of human drama set against the backdrop of corporate corruption and gruesome body horror. And it all began with a little game set in a creaky old mansion up in the mountains back in 1996. Even now, more than a quarter of a century after it came out, there's something about the elegant simplicity of the original Resident Evil that just captures my heart and my imagination. But it's also a game that left me with a lot of unanswered questions. And yeah, I know there's probably only a handful of people out there who even care about it now, but what the hell? It's my channel, and every so often I get to indulge myself a little bit. So grab your Beretta and your first aid spray and join me for the drinker's biggest Resident Evil mysteries. Number 1. The Second Character The game allows you to pick between two playable characters right off the bat, Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine, both of which roughly correspond to hard or easy mode respectively. Both campaigns take place in a kind of alternate reality, following the same basic scenario but with significant differences depending on which character you chose. Whichever one you picked, the other one is going to vanish during the opening cinematic and appear only near the climax of the story in a prison cell in the lab area. And the thing that I've always wondered is, how the hell did they end up there? I mean, since Albert Wesker seems to be the only human antagonist in the game, you can probably assume that he knocked them out and locked them in the cell at some point during the events of the story. Now, this works perfectly fine in Chrissy's campaign, where Jill clearly makes it into the mansion and only disappears once you wander off to explore the place. Although, there is an extra element of weirdness in Chrissy's scenario because you somehow lose contact with Barry while entering the mansion and you literally never see or hear about him again. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Jill, and myself. We don't know where Barry is. But the whole thing really falls apart if you're playing as Jill because Chris doesn't even make it inside the mansion. He just kind of vanishes while you're coming in through the main doors and since Wesker is with you during the whole thing, what the hell actually happened to Chris? If Wesker knocked him unconscious then he'd have to leave him outside at least temporarily while he waited for the others to leave, in which case he would have gotten eaten by the zombie dogs that were prowling the mansion grounds. Also, Wesker would have had to have dragged his unconscious teammate all the way through the mansion, the garden area, the underground caves, and the lab just to get him into that prison cell. And for what? He doesn't seem to have any real intentions towards whatever character's in there. I mean, damn man, that's some serious dedication right there. Number 2. Forest Spare Another little mystery is the fate of Forrest Spare, the sniper for Bravo Team. You find him on the second floor balcony already dead, apparently having been pecked to death by crows. But if you look at the corridor leading outside, you'll find blood marks on the walls, which suggests he was injured somewhere else in the mansion and staggered outside, either dying from his wounds or getting finished off by the zombie crows hanging around out there. And it always made me wonder, what the hell actually managed to injure him? I mean, the guy was packing a grenade launcher, so there's not much that could get near him without being blown to pieces. I don't know, it just always struck me as an interesting little mystery that the game devs set up but never really solved for you. Number 3, Richard Aiken. Once you get your hands on the armour key, you can access a room where you'll find Richard, one of your teammates who just got attacked and injured by Yawn, a giant poisonous snake that you're going to have to fight pretty soon. You'll also be treated to some of the greatest voice acting in Resident Evil history. This house is dangerous. There are terrible demons. Ouch! Fuck me, this makes the Jill Sandwich line look like the fucking Gettysburg Address. But the thing is, the room in which you find Richard is locked, and so is the room where you fight Yawn. So I have to ask, how exactly did he get in there and get bitten when he would have needed two different keys that he didn't have? It seems Jill's not the only master of unlocking in this game. Number 4, Enrico Marini. About two thirds of the way through the game, you'll make your way into a series of underground caves that are only accessible once you use the crank to shut down the waterfall block in the entrance, and then use a battery to power up the elevator that you can ride back down into the courtyard area. I mean, it's a neat little puzzle that forces you to think creatively, so no complaints there. But the thing is, once you get down there, you'll find Enrico, the leader of Bravo Team. He's injured and aggressive and tries to warn you about a traitor before someone murders him. But the thing I keep wondering is, how did he even get 
get down there in the first place. I mean, presumably he must have gone through the same steps as the player to access the caves, but then the waterfall's still running when you show up and there's no way to trigger it from inside the cave system, so how the fuck does that work? Did Wesker trigger the waterfall again to seal him inside? I mean, it kind of makes sense if he wanted the guy dead, but if he did, why go to the trouble of putting the crank and the battery back where he got them? Does he just really like to tidy up after himself for what? Number 5. The Newspaper Clippings In the library on the second floor of the mansion, you'll find a collection of newspaper clippings about a series of murders in the Arklay Mountains and the police response to the killings. The thing is, these articles were written after the T-virus outbreak that wiped out the staff at the mansion, so who exactly put these things there, and why? Number 6. The Naked Lab Zombies In the central lab area near the end of the game, you'll encounter several naked zombies wandering around. You can kill them just as easily as any other zombie, but the problem is they'll regenerate every time you leave the area and come back. I mean literally, you can blow their heads clean off their shoulders or even obliterate them with the rocket launcher and they'll still be there the next time you return, alive and well. Well, kind of at least. And it always made me wonder, what the hell are these things? Why are they the only enemy in the game that doesn't stay persistently dead? Are they some kind of weird early prototype version of the Regenerators from RE4? Or do more of them somehow enter through some hidden doorway when you're not looking? Don't know. Number 7. The Heliport Doors just before you enter the underground lab, you'll find yourself in a small garden area with a fountain at one end and the heliport at the other. There's a big set of doors leading to the heliport, but as you find out, they've been welded shut and can't be opened. And it always made me wonder why the devs even chose to put in an environmental asset like that. Like, why not just have a blank wall there instead of doors that were never meant to be opened? Was there originally going to be a shortcut to the heliport that would let you bypass the lab and end the game? Or was that supposed to be the main access point for the lab and they only added in the secret fountain entrance later. No idea, but as a kid I was fucking convinced that I was going to need a welding kit or explosive to force the door open and I wasted absolutely ages looking for them. Yeah, I was pretty dumb back then. Number 8. The Dog Pens At one point in the story, you come across the infamous Keeper's Diary, which records the events leading up to and following the T-virus outbreak, from the point of view of a lab employee charged with looking after the dogs and later the hunters. As the virus takes hold, his writing slowly begins to degrade as his mind unravels. It's a neat little file, but it raises a few questions for me. Like, at one point he mentions going down to the dog pens and noticing that some of them had escaped, and he's pissed because he knows he's going to get in trouble for it. The thing is, there's no such place in the actual game map. You never encounter any kind of containment area where dogs or hunters might have been kept. So is this some kind of hidden area that the player never gets to see, or is it located somewhere off site? I mean, most of the dogs tend to be prowling around in the outside areas, which suggests their pens might be somewhere else on the mansion grounds, but where? I guess we'll never know. Like I say, I know it's kind of pointless to be asking questions about a 27 year old video game, but I guess it's a testament to Resident Evil's enduring appeal that I still find myself pondering stuff like this decades later. And who knows, maybe one of you guys have got the answers to it. Either way, I appreciate you indulging me for a few minutes, and if you haven't played this classic little gem of a survival horror game, then what the hell are you wasting time on YouTube for? Get it sorted right now! Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now!